fun, and we're going to play some fun Christmas songs and, and celebrate. So it's the season. It's the Christmas season. So uh, last time, if you were here, when I shared, I like to use a couple visual aids. So this is the Christmas scene today, and uh, that's what we're going to be looking at today is uh, Always Christmas is the title of what we're going to be talking about. And I, I thought of this idea when I was younger. I was like, man, how fun would it be to have a restaurant? called Always Christmas, and what if you, like, came in, there's, like, fake snow, Christmas music playing, so if you, if you love Christmas, this is an amazing time of year to settle in and just see what God is doing, and Hawaii doesn't necessarily feel like Christmas, because it's warm out and uh, sunny out all the time, but as we settle into Christmas, I feel like God has something really special for each and every person here today, and something that, that God wants to speak through the Christmas story to your heart and life in a new way today. And uh, so when I was younger, as a kid, my, my parents would, would read the Christmas story to us every Christmas morning, and we had to do it before presents. And so we're sitting there, me and my sisters, and we're like, ah, every Christmas morning. And my dad would go through so slow, right? And he's like explaining it over and over. And you're just dying to open up presents, right? And me and my sisters are, so finally we got smarter. We're like, what if one of us reads the Christmas story? And then we're like looking through, hey, it's shortest in Luke if you read it really fast, right? And so we're just like jamming through. Yeah, and then Bethlehem, Jesus, blah, 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 right? And then time for presents. And so we used to do that every Christmas morning. And so I read the Christmas story over and over. And it's almost like gets kind of boring and kind of like monotonous. But I think there's a fun way to celebrate the Christmas story. And what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of try to find yourself and where does God want you in the Christmas story. So there's a, a book that my, my niece and nephew are reading, and it's called The Noisy Christmas. You have a picture of that one up there? So instead of the, or The Noisy Night. So instead of The Silent Night, The Noisy Night. And so I thought it was kind of a fun take on the Christmas story. So it's, uh, it's this, the, the story of the birth of, here we go, right here. It may have been a silent night when Jesus came to earth, or it may have been a noisy night to celebrate his birth. Next slide. The angels broke the silence on the hillside with their song. They sang their hallelujahs as the shepherds hummed along. The shepherds must have hollered as they spread the news around. Perhaps the town folks danced and sang and added to the sound. And so in this picture, I'll oh, go back real quick for me, Zion, thank you. So in this picture, my, my niece always points to the one over there with the blonde hair and the beard, and she goes, rai, 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 rai. So I'm in the story there, um, which is the, the, yeah, anyway. So we're going to try to, but next slide. But more often than I, in life, I feel like the donkey there in the Christmas story. All right, anyway. Uh, when chickens chuckled and duckies quacked to celebrate the boy, the birdies chirped and donkeys brayed, the mice all squeaked with joy. The camels must have snorted when the eastern star appeared, and when the kings arrived at last, they wondered, I wonder if they cheered. Yes, Jesus is our Savior, a gift from God above. He brings us hope and peace and joy and everlasting love. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the hope of Christmas. Thank you for sending your son to a manger, to a cross for us. Lord, I pray that each and every person here, God, would, would hear your voice today, that they would experience your touch, they'd experience your grace, they'd feel your heart, your love, your life, your hope, your purpose, your plan. So we thank you for the hope of Christmas, God. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate you. Amen. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Christmas story, and we're going to look at a couple of these different characters as we come across it. And my encouragement to you, and what I hope you can do, is pray and ask God, which character does God want you to be like this Christmas? What is God laying on your heart this Christmas, and what does God want to do in your life this Christmas as you get ready for uh, the, the Christmas season to approach? 
And uh, I think that God has a special message for each and every person today. And I think it's going to be a little different for each of you. And so my encouragement is just kind of as we press into the story to see which character either you relate to or that God wants to bring about in your heart and life. And so the story opens up in Luke chapter 2. And it opens up in Luke after chapter 2 and says, At the time of the Roman Empire, Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the entire Roman Empire. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Ju Judea, David's ancient home. And he traveled there from a village in Nazareth in Galilee. And he took with him Mary, who was engaged, who he was engaged to, who is now expecting a child. All right, so the story opens up. And it's a little scandalous at first, right? Joseph is engaged to Mary. She's pregnant. Whoa, what's going on here, right? So it's like the story opens up. And, and Joseph, so we got, we got Joseph right here. So we'll add Joseph to the Christmas story so he can uh, jump in there. So there's Joseph. And the story opens up with Joseph. And, and Joseph is obedient, because Joseph finds out that his wife is pregnant. And if, and if, and if your wife-to-be is pregnant and you have not been with her, that's like could be a little confusing, right? And so Joseph gets a, uh, an angel appears to him in a dream, and the angel tells Joseph to take Mary to be his, his, his wife. And so Joseph is obedient even when it doesn't make sense. And maybe God's calling you to be obedient even when it doesn't make sense. And there's some characters in the Bible, like Noah, and God says, Noah, start building an ark. And Noah's looking around, it's not raining, what am I doing? And God says, start building an ark. So he starts building an ark. Or God tells uh, Abraham, sacrifice your son. Or God tells Hosea, take this prostitute back to be your wife over and over again. So sometimes God calls us to these really hard, difficult things and so Joseph's called to something very difficult. He has to step into a place where his wife is pregnant from God, and he's supposed to marry her and help raise the Son of God. And so maybe God's calling you this Christmas to be obedient even when it doesn't make sense. And so Joseph, in Matthew chapter 1, to whom... He, uh, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. And as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will save the people from their sins. So, Joseph, I think, doesn't get as much credit as, as he should, because Joseph has to step out in faith, and Joseph has to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be faithful to what God's called me to, I'm going to be faithful to this woman who's pregnant with a, a baby that's not mine, and, and, and Joseph is obedient to God, even when it doesn't make sense. All right, and then... The story continues. I think I got a couple pictures of Bethlehem here. So Joseph and Mary are walking into Bethlehem. When I was in Israel, here's a couple pictures. They're a little hard to see, but this is walking into Bethlehem. You have Bethlehem in the distance here. And I took a couple of these pictures when I was in Israel for uh, such a time as this. Here's a path kind of coming into Bethlehem. So it's almost like you could see Mary and Joseph walking into the city, cross the path into Bethlehem. Then once you get inside the city of Bethlehem, they have uh, a church there where they say Jesus was born, and the location is right there. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see, but you walk in through this little tiny opening there, and then you come into this church, and they say Jesus was born right there. That's me with short hair. And uh, people are weeping and crying. They call it the, the religious, or what do they call it? Anyway, some syndrome where you go to Israel and everyone's weeping and and so people are like all gathered around right there and they're like trying to get a pictures with where they say Jesus was born and touch the spot so anyway that's right there in in Bethlehem and so if you ever get a chance to go to Israel I think I got some pictures of the Sea of Galilee too we have the uh the Sea of Galilee there there's me going for a swim in the Sea of Galilee and there you go that's that's what Israel looks like if you haven't been there so 
that's kind of going in if you're heading into Bethlehem and then the Sea of Galilee. So that way you got some pictures, some context with the story. So then Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. Where is this newborn king of the Jews? They saw a star that rose above the area where Jesus was to be born. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this. And he called a meeting of the lead teachers and priests and asked them, where is this Messiah to be born? And so we find out that Herod is afraid of this new king. And Herod wants to be on the throne. And he doesn't want anyone else to be on the throne. And so maybe this Christmas, you know someone who's in that role of Herod. And they're like, no, I'm king of my life. I'm the king of my world. And Herod is threatened by this new king, this new baby king that is coming into the world. And so Herod is afraid that someone else is going to take his throne. And sometimes we're afraid to give up the throne in our own heart and in our own life. And maybe this Christmas, God's calling you to, to let go of the throne in your own life and let Jesus step into that place of lordship in your life. And so the wise men enter in next, and we'll see the wise men in the story here. So we got a couple of these. Here's the wise men here. We'll add these guys into the story. And they are bringing gifts to baby Jesus, and we'll get into those in just a second here. So the wise men come into the story next, and the wise men in Matthew 2 says, And the star that they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, and they saw the child and his mother, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened up their treasure chests, and they gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so the wise men seek Jesus. And I, I was driving, and I saw this bench uh, a while ago, and it really stuck out to me. Wise men still seek Jesus Christ. I thought that was pretty clever. So the wise men are seeking Jesus, and the wise men are seeking wisdom. Who else seeks wisdom in the Bible? We look at Solomon, right? He gets one request. He says, okay, God, my one wish is that you give me wisdom. And Solomon, God pours out wisdom on him. One of my favorite stories is the two women come to Solomon. They both say, the baby's mine. And Solomon says, okay, let's do this. We'll cut it in half and give you each half the baby, right? And the one woman who it's her child says, no, please save my child. So we were acting that out for youth group one time. And I, I, I had a, like a stuffed bunny and a machete. And I was going to chop the, chop the bunny in half. And my two friends are holding the the bunny, and they look at me like, bro, don't miss this, because we had to chop it in half just for the, for, I mean, Solomon didn't, but we had to for the, the story. So, again, back to the visual aid. So we have our three, three wise men here that are entering in the story, and the wise men are bringing their treasure before baby Jesus, before the new king, and they're bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and a lot of people believe that the gold represented the kingship and the lordship of, of what Jesus was embodied to become. And then the, the, the frankincense was a burnt offering that they would use. And so a lot of people believe that this was in, 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 his, in reflection of his deity. And then the myrrh was a foreshadow of his death. And so these wise men come because they feel a calling to get as close to Jesus as they can. And maybe God's calling your heart this Christmas just to get closer to him, just to be, uh, to seek him and to, and to search out what God has. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And almost everyone knows that part. But then it says, But then you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So when, when we seek God with all our heart, and from my experience, when people haven't found God, maybe they haven't started seeking with their whole heart. Maybe they've looked a little bit, but, the, but it promises that if we seek God with our whole heart, 
that we will be that he will be found by us. And so the wise men they seek Jesus and they bring their treasure. And so maybe God's calling you to to bring the treasure in your life to him this Christmas. And I define our treasure as as our time, our talent, our treasure, right? Maybe God's calling more of your time this Christmas. Maybe he's calling your talents and your abilities. I know we have some incredible, uh, gifted, amazing people in our, in our church. And maybe God's calling you to step out in faith and start serving or start singing or start participating more. Or maybe God's calling you to start giving more. Maybe God's calling you to start tithing or giving or to give an offering this Christmas. And so the wise men come and they bring what they have. They bring the best of what they have before the king before this baby Jesus. They bring the best of what they have. They bring this treasure and they open up their treasure chest and they bring the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh to Jesus. Next part, we have the shepherds and the angels. So we have the angel up here and we don't have any shepherds in the, in the, in the little set. So we're just gonna add in the sheep here and the, here's the donkey, there's me. Donkey. And then uh, we'll just make the, the, the animals will be representative of the, of the shepherds in the story. So we have the shepherds and the angel. And that's, that part of the story comes in right here where it says, That night the shepherds were in the field nearby, guarding the flocks by night. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the radiance of the angel shone upon them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. He said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news and great joy, for there is a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, who is born to you today in the city of David in Bethlehem. And you will recognize him by this. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. And so the angels appear to the shepherds and tell them about this new king that's coming, about baby Jesus. And so then the shepherds, they go to meet Jesus. And so when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go see this thing that happened, which the Lord told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. And the angel of the Lord said to them about this child, all who know him will be astonished and see that he is the king of the Jews. And the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. And so maybe God's calling you this Christmas to share with people about Jesus. Maybe God has people in your life that he wants you to share with about what Jesus has done in your life, about what God has done in your life. And so the shepherds, they come, they experience Jesus, and then they go and they tell others because it's impacted them and it's changed them. And, and they are... They're in this incredible state of mind and heart because they've experienced Jesus. And I used to have a hard time sometimes when I was younger telling my friends about God. I was like, ah, do I tell my friends about God? I don't want them to, like, think I'm weird or I don't want them to, like, you know, like, think that I'm not cool. And, and I started realizing, like, no, like, God is the most incredible thing. And what Jesus has done in my life has changed my my earthly life and has changed my eternity. And so I should never be ashamed of what God's done in my life. And it started recognizing that like when I tell people about surfing, I was never ashamed of that. I'm like, oh dude, you should go surfing. It'll change your life. And I start realizing like surfing changed my life. Jesus is even more powerful than surfing. He's going to change your life and your eternity. I should be telling people with that same enthusiasm, like, you should surf. No, you should know Jesus. You should know God. That's even more important, more valuable to know, like, that, that the, the king of the universe loves you and cares about you and came to earth for you. And so that should inspire our worship. And that's where the angels step in. And the angels just worship Jesus. And maybe God's calling you just to worship this Christmas, just to spend some time just worshiping. As we were worshiping this morning, I could just feel like the glory in the room just settling in as, as you guys were singing and just felt like God's presence just so prevalent permeating the room. And, and it's something special to worship together and something really special to, to come together and to sing and to worship. And I think sometimes... We take church for granted, but there's something really incredible that happens when we get to come together as people from all different walks of life 
and we come into a space together and we get to worship our king together. And that's a pretty powerful thing. All these broken humans come into a room in our own sin, our own mistakes, our own shame, our own faults and failures, our own hurts and wounds, and we bring glory to God together. And that's an incredible offering that I know I take for granted sometimes. And the Lord was just pressing on my heart this morning, like, this is so special to have an opportunity to worship together like we get a chance to do and to celebrate God together, to worship him in spirit and in truth is, is this incredible gift uh, that we have when we come together and, and celebrate him. And so we get to join in with the angels and, and worship the King of Kings and, and Lord of Lords. What an honor that is. And then we have Mary. So we'll bring Mary up here. And and while they were still there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no lodging available for them in the inn. And then Luke 2.19 says, But Mary kept these things in her heart and thought often about them. And I was thinking, like, how crazy for Mary. She's holding baby Jesus, looking into his face. And maybe this Christmas, God's just calling you to look into the face of Jesus and just be still. And then we have Jesus, the baby king that comes to save us from our sin and to give us hope of heaven and give us hope of eternal life. And I know that the Christmas story sometimes has gotten kind of old or kind of boring, but the power of what it represents to our life on earth and our eternity is what really counts. And when we celebrate Jesus this Christmas, not only are we celebrating his birth, but we're also celebrating his death and his resurrection. And so I had David uh, lead that song for us. And that's one of my favorite songs of all time. And I'm going to encourage you just to close your eyes. I'm going to read the lyrics uh, one more time to you. And it goes, uh, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, a father turns his face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. For it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, nor gifts, nor power, nor wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. And I had this picture of Jesus hanging on the cross and seeing our faces flash before him as he's taking each of our sins upon himself on the cross of Calvary. And as we celebrate Jesus this Christmas, it's essential that we remember 
not just his birth, but also his death and his resurrection. And so maybe this Christmas, God's calling you to be like Joseph. Maybe he's calling you to be obedient to something that he's placed in your heart and it doesn't make sense. Maybe he's calling you to to give or to sacrifice or to love in a way that you just don't want to. But God's putting it on your heart and he's saying, obedience. And over and over in the Bible, there's these stories where we have to step out in faith and be obedient when it doesn't make sense. Maybe you're like Herod and maybe you want to be king of your own life. And maybe God's calling you this Christmas to allow there to be a new king and to allow the pride of life and the fear of of letting go of control take place so that a new king can come into the throne of your heart and you can be free from yourself and your own desires and your own pain and your own um, fears. Or maybe God's calling you to be like the wise men this Christmas, to seek him and to search after him with all your heart. Maybe you're getting closer to Jesus, you're following what God's put on your heart, but you're not at the manger yet. You're not in Bethlehem yet. Wherever you are on that journey going towards Jesus, just keep going. Keep taking another step. Keep taking a step of faith. And Dwayne was talking about it last week, about our journey of faith, and we run to win the prize. But sometimes in life, I'm running after the Lord, and I'm like, Lord, you have my whole heart. Here I am. And then sometimes in life, I'm limping after the Lord. And then sometimes in life, you're crawling. Because life's really hard sometimes. And our faith is really difficult. God just says one step at a time. Keep walking towards the star. Keep following him. And if you're crawling, just keep trying to take the next step. And if you're limping, keep limping along. And if you're walking, start to jog. And if you're jogging, start to run. We don't go from crawling to running. We just start the next step and try to take the next step and do the next right thing. Just do the next right decision that God puts in front of us to take a step of faith one at a time. And as we do it, it gets easier. There's that old song, what if I stumble, what if I fall? What if I lose my way and I make fools of us all? Will the love continue when my walk becomes a crawl? And God knows right where you're at in that journey of faith. And whether you're crawling into Bethlehem or running into Bethlehem, he loves you right where you're at. But he loves you too much to leave you there. And he wants wants more for you. He wants more out of you because he has a better plan. And if you're crawling, he wants you to, to learn to walk. And if you're walking, he wants you to learn to run. And so just keep taking that step this Christmas. Or maybe you're like the wise men and God's calling you to give something. God's calling you to give something special to the Lord. Maybe he's calling for a sacrifice. Maybe he's calling for for more of your money. Maybe he's calling for more of your time. Maybe he's calling for more of your talents. And, And maybe God wants you to be like one of the wise men this Christmas, bringing what you have, opening up the treasure of your heart to the Lord. And I think of the parable of the talents to some has been given one, five, and ten. And then God holds us accountable for what we've been given. And that's a very important thing to remember. God gives us gifts, but then he holds us accountable for how we use those gifts. He holds us accountable for the money he gives us, the time he gives us, the talents he gives us. And we stand before a holy God someday, and he says, what did you do with what I gave you? That is a very powerful moment that weighs heavy on my heart because God has given me so much and I've fallen so many times and been crawling in my faith just trying to to make it a little farther and God picks you up and dusts you off and helps you start to walk again.
Maybe God wants you to be like the shepherds this Christmas and to share the joy of Jesus with some friends or family. And maybe some of you are going to be going home and maybe there's some people in your life, either friends or family, that, that don't know him yet, that haven't experienced the, the, the joy and the truth of Christmas. And maybe God wants you to share what Jesus has done for you to them this Christmas. Maybe God wants you to be like the angels and just worship him and just worship baby Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords and celebrate what Jesus represents to you and to the world. Maybe God wants you to be like Mary. Be still and know that I am God. And as we step into this last into this song, I, I encourage you just to just to let God speak to your heart right now, and just let the Lord lay on your heart what what He what He desires for you individually for the rest of this month, for the rest of December, leading up to Christmas. What is God putting on your heart? What is God sharing with you? What is God whispering to you? Tomorrow I'm meeting with. Uh, A guy who has stage four cancer and uh, just got the news that um, he's got six to eight months to live. And uh, a friend from California called and said, hey, would you go meet with my cousin? He's, he's gonna die and doesn't know the Lord. So I'm gonna go meet with him tomorrow and uh, it's hard for me because I lost my mom to cancer and I lost both my grandpas to cancer. So watching people die of cancer is a very painful thing for me. And I'm trying to pray and think about what do I, what do I share with this guy? What do I talk to Jerry about? If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so this baby Jesus that we take Christmas so lightly sometimes is the salvation of our souls and the hope of heaven because we don't have that much time left on this side. Days turn into months, months turn into years, and our life goes ticking by. And God has a beautiful anointing and a calling on our lives and we miss it sometimes because we don't step into what Jesus has for us right now. And I was thinking about Jerry as I go to meet with him tomorrow. And, you know, it doesn't do you any good to be an atheist if you're in a foxhole in the war or you're in a stage four cancer ward and you know that your life is going to end. And the reality of our life here on this side is that it's just, it's just a, a fleeting moment that we're here for a few years and and then we're on to the next one. And what does that next life look like? What does our eternity look like? Do we, do we know who God is? Have we placed our faith and trust in baby Jesus who hung on the cross, who died for us, who rose for us? And if you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, I wanna give you an opportunity just to, to give your life to the Lord this morning. And it's really easy you just cry out to God and you just, you just tell him where your heart's at and Romans 10, nine says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. And all the sins we've done, all the past mistakes, he takes it on the cross takes our sin and our shame and our brokenness and he redeems us and restores us and maybe we don't get saved in this life I was praying so hard for my mom to get saved from cancer and she died praying so hard for my grandpas and they died but there's hope beyond this life there's the hope of heaven as the people are deserting Jesus, he turns around to the disciples and says, are you going to leave too? And 
Peter says, where else do we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. So what else do we turn to when life is hard? Where else do we turn to when you get the news that you have stage four cancer? What else brings hope? And so the amazing thing is that Jesus brings hope. Hope to a lost and dying world and hope to our salvation. So Lord Jesus, we cry out to you this morning. We say we love you. Confess our sins, God. Confess our failures, our faults. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And we say, Jesus, come into our heart. We put our faith and our hope and our trust in you. King of kings and Lord of lords. We confess our sin and accept your sacrifice and your redemption and your purpose and your plan. And we say, Abba, Father, come transform us from the inside out. Make us a new creation. Give us hope not just for this life, but hope for eternity, God. So we love you, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you that you gave your one and only son into a manger to live this beautiful, holy life and to die for us, to raise for us, 